Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be looking at my collection of what guns I actually have knocking about here. Now it's not the biggest collection compared to some, but you know, it's decent. So stay tuned. Remember guys, if you like the content, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below. Every little bit helps to keep the channel going. It's you guys that keep the channel where it is and keep it progressing forward. So remember to subscribe to support us and let's get on with this video. Okay then, I'm splitting this video into two. I'm gonna do pistols and submachine guns and a shotgun in this one. And then all the long guns I'm gonna do in the second video. Now I haven't got as many pistols as I have long guns, I don't think so anyway, but uh, there's still a fair few here. And also some of them you've seen before in my other videos, but we'll, we'll revisit them, have a look and uh, see what we think. So starting off, with the very first pistol I ever bought, which is a KJ Works SIG P226. As you can see, she's pretty old. So this gun would have been, when would have this been made? Probably around 2008, uh, maybe 2007. So it's pretty old and it looks it as well. Now this gun I don't actually use any of This was my sidearm for a good few years though. This was the only pistol I ever ran. And um, yeah, it's pretty battered, but it served me well. The only problem was the standard KJ Works magazines were awful. They were absolutely rubbish. So I replaced uh, a couple of them with their uh, Tokyo Maru mags. But these have got hard to get hold of and uh, were less reliable and uh, eventually I retired it and it's a shame because it was actually a really good pistol and I had some fun with it but uh, I do keep toying with the idea of giving it a renovation and rebuilding it and getting it going again but it's just not worth it and the slide's so wobbly on it it's so worn out but you know what it worked and all the functions of the real pistol were on there as well even with a decocking lever the mag release down here and it was heavy it was in a time when there were a lot of plastic pistols around this was full aluminium it was a solid build and it worked really well uh, once you got the magazine sorted if you use a sink the kj works forget it It was like one shot and then psh, all your gas was gone but you know what it still operates it still works and you can't fault it on that one it does still work in the sense that the slide locks back and everything there aren't actually any internals in here anymore um, I've actually taken most of them out because I've used it as spares. So if we take the mag out, we can take this off. Oh yeah, actually I did leave some in. There's no inner barrel in it though, that's what it was. I took the inner barrel and hop out. Uh, but we've still got the inner barrel hop unit and the spring, return spring. We've got the nozzle, loading nozzle. So that's an upgraded loading nozzle. Um, I can't remember, it might be a guard or something like that. And when it was working, it was fantastic. It was just the mags were a pain in the backside to get hold of and uh, i really struggled there may be some out there now that fit some of the later generation ones um and i don't know if you guys really want to see me put this back together again as a as a build let me know and um i'll do it uh, just for the crack uh but if anyone knows what magazines work in it would work in this now let me know save me buying any and find they don't you know what i mean <laughs> but uh, yeah give me the heads up and if i can find some that work then maybe we'll do a renovation job on this and see if we can actually do something with it because i reckon it'd be quite good fun to, to try and renovate it and put some real steel grips and things on there and and give it a paint job maybe get all this old coating off maybe even give it a uh, a um, krylon paint job maybe so let me know in the comments if you do want to see me do that because it could be fun or it could give me gray hair and make me die quietly in the corner. I don't know, it could go either way really. So, moving on. That was my very first airsoft pistol. Then next up was this guy. Now this is actually uh, an M9 uh, PTP from KWA. And it was a time when the KWAs were essentially the same as KSCs, I think they were. Um, but just the, the unlicensed version of them and these were great these were really good this pistol was so cheap for what it is it actually cost me 89 pounds it's full aluminium except for the outer barrel unfortunately that bits there's plastic but the rest of it is full metal and it works just like the real thing so instead of like some of them you'll find that the safety is actually just a safety on this it is actually the decocker as well which is the same operation as the real steel and also with a little button in, pressed in here you can 
take it down. And this thing has been nothing but reliable. Um, it's And it's got a solid 320 feet per second as well. Um, really, really impressive gun. Honestly, it's accurate as well. And I've done nothing to this. I've not changed the hop or anything else. It has always been super reliable, really accurate, you know, pushing out further than it should do really. And for that reason, I have never touched it. I've never done anything to it other than maintain it because it's always been so good. And you can take the slide off. Pretty lightweight aluminium slide, but I think a lot of that's down to this plastic barrel. But it's just been a winner. This gun is so good. It's just a shame that I don't often want to run an M9, which is the only stupid thing about it. I don't run M9 very often. But it is just so solid. I have used it quite a lot over the years, but I get bored of, of running M9 after. I always get bored of running M9 after a while and go back to a, um, a you know, Glocks or like something a bit more fancy, SIGs, you know what I mean, something a bit more modern, because the M9, bless it, it's, it's getting a bit long in the tooth. The US Army are changing or going away from them, but you just can't beat a good old fashioned M9, can you? I mean, they, they're just great. So yeah, trusty old M9, can't beat it. Always keep your gas in your mags. Oh, that was the other thing about these, is they've got really nice uh, feed lips on the, on the actual, um, on the actual magazine so you never usually had a problem with feeding or anything a nice rounded lips that kept the bbs in place you didn't have to file the lips or anything it worked perfect every time really nice design these were or are should i say and they're actually the feed lips on these are actually metal as well they're not plastic like a lot of them uh, which is pretty unusual you can actually see where the paint's worn off on the top where the metal is showing through so a really solid design um another thing why do people not do this anymore <laughs> well, I suppose they do, but not all manufacturers. A locking mechanism so you can feed it with BBs. And you just feed them through the top by the feed lips and you can't damage them because they're metal. So really good design, I really like these. The only problem is I have a habit of losing these. So I've actually lost about three magazines for this gun. Um, because of the position, you have to watch what holster you use. You're better off using a hard Safari Land holster or a... Um, like one of the uh, Kydex holsters, simply because I used originally a material holster, and as soon as you put any pressure on the holster, if you're lent up against the wall or you know you're in a, a ditch or something, you'd lean down, it'd press the mag release, and your magazine would carefully make its way out and vanish. So when you came to pull your sidearm out, you think, oh, the pistol's a bit light. Oh, yeah. So I've lost a couple of magazines because of that. Even the universal uh, pistol holster from Warrior isn't a big fan of the M9. It just seems to bind up on the actual front of the... So yeah, the front uh, of the of the actual trigger guard has had the binding up. Uh, I don't know why, whether it just prefers polymer uh, lower guns. But yeah, other than that, I can't fault this gun. It's been so good. So, moving on. So my next purchase was this guy, again from KWA, and the reason I got KWA is because the guns are such good quality for not a great amount of money, and this was just over £100, so again, really cheap, cheap pistol for what it was. And this is the Glock 18C. Of course, the gun that's made famous for the fact it's got full auto. Now this gun had worked very, very well at the box. But the, the FPS is a little bit low, so it's around 250, which is a bit lower than I'd liked. And it's odd because it came out at exactly the same time around the, the M9. But the performance wasn't quite as good as the M9. So it didn't fire quite as straight, and um, the actual gas consumption wasn't as good. Of course, on full auto, you could absolutely destroy anything, though. On full auto, it just empties a mag in seconds. Uh, for that reason, I have got around here somewhere a extended mag that comes out the bottom. But this spent most of its life actually inside this thing, which is a Herrera Arms, um, basically uh, submachine gun stock. Stock. Ugh, say that again. Submachine gun stock, and basically this would fit inside there. Um, put it onto full auto. 
so this would fit inside there like so and you'd carry it around like basically like a submachine gun and you'd cock it using the lever back here and it actually it took a lot of modification this this here hair arms um thing it was once i'd modified it though it actually worked really really well but it took a lot of dremeling and messing about inside to get everything working so it wasn't binding up on the actual uh, slide of the glock because it could mess it up a little bit and one thing I had with this gun, this gun could again do with a strip down and a bit of a, a going over. It's we you have to replace this um, trigger pin with this threaded rod for it to be able to fit in here and to hold securely. But uh, I never got around to putting the old one back in, and I'm not sure I could even find the old one now because it was many years ago. Again, this is going back to so 2010, 2011 maybe. Um, so yeah, dating back quite a while. But other than that, the gun's actually really good. Um, nice design with the magazine, same as with the M9. You've got these metal feed lips and you've got the slide that lock back. So it allows you to feed up all your BBs in and then just release it. I just preferred that. I, I just always prefer that. Um, so yeah, really solid gun. It still performs, still works now. And I, I scrimmaged it a couple of weeks ago. Should be some gas in here. Uh, throw that down. Still operates and if we put it into full auto still good so yeah still works well i do have the odd issue with it uh, it will sometimes not feed or it'll do something strange um i've had a couple of <laughs> i once had a spring come flying out of it and took me hours to find and put back in so it's not the most reliable gun in the same sense of the m9 uh, if we take it down like so like any glock see the insides yeah it's, it's it's okay it's quite a lightweight gun quite a light slide and light lower but it's well made it's you know stood the test of time so i can't really complain these springs do have a habit of flying out if you're not careful if you tip them upside down because they're not captured like many of them uh, but yeah it works works okay um yeah not much else to say about this really i wouldn't put a lot of time into customizing this gun simply because i don't think it's reliable enough I think if you started messing with it, I think it would start to break and start to struggle. So I've never bothered messing with it as far as um, customization is concerned. I just don't think it would like it. So that's the Glock 18C. So next one along. Hmm, this is a submachine gun. One of my favorite submachine guns of all time, the MP5. Now you may notice there's a few bits missing on this. I love the MP5. It is literally one of my favorite guns. But thanks to a company called SRC, they released this saying that it was the best MP5 replica ever made. It was made of full steel body. You could drive your car over it. It was indestructible. The body was completely solid. It was made in the same way as the real MP5. And for the most part, I'd actually agree with them. It is a full steel construction, full steel upper, upper receiver, mag well, mag, everything is steel, except for obviously the polymer parts, which should be polymer, like the foregrip and the lower body. Even the stock works well. So even this, it's pretty solid for a, a extendable stock. No problems when you push it back in, it goes with a nice click. Oh, how it had promise. Unfortunately, SRC promoted all of this wonderful build and construction of the externals and everything else, but they negated to uh, actually comment on the fact that the internals and the magazines were absolute junk. This gun never ever worked properly and I have never actually skirmished it because I could never get it to do what I wanted. I should have sent it back with a strongly worded letter, but as usual I decided I could fix it and I would make it work. But I never did. I worked and worked and worked on this gun to try and get it to work. But at the end of the day, when your magazines come out brand new and don't feed because they're rubbish, you're never going to get anywhere with this. Maybe I should have modified and put ICS mags and things like that in to try and get it. But then the hop-up unit was so bad. It was so loose. The barrel would usually, it would literally flop around inside the hop unit. I even considered machining my own hop unit to try and make it work. And for this reason, I have never touched another um, SRC gun in my life. They are absolutely, well, I don't know what they're like now. 
I haven't had one recently, but this thing was a piece of junk and that's why there's nothing in there. The gearbox actually randomly broke on me one day as well when I was trying to get it to feed and I hadn't even done anything to it <laughs> to break it. It just broke anyway. The internals were absolute rubbish. I wouldn't have put them in a blooming toy, uh, let alone uh, something that you're supposed to run around playing airsoft with. No, massive disappointment. I will not ever spend time trying to fix this gun again. Uh, I should take that off, really. I do want another MP5 desperately, but uh, it won't be one of SRCs, SR5s or whatever they call them now, um, because it was rubbish. So, next up, my 1911. Good old-fashioned 1911 A1. This isn't the first one I've got. Uh, I actually had a Tokyo Marie. 1911 a1 before i had this uh it was absolutely awful on gas used gas like you couldn't believe if you if you emptied the mag with with one fill you were lucky um and it was so bad i actually don't know where it is i've, I've stripped it down for parts and it's the various parts are in my spares boxes somewhere so i haven't bothered including it in this because i can't really get it together but i could show you a picture of a load of boxes and say it's in there somewhere so we came onto this. This is much newer than the um, Tokyo Maru, to be fair. It was an old Tokyo Maru that I had. So this is the KWC CO2 version. Now it's devoid of, of trades of any kind to suggest it's 1911, but everyone knows a 1911 when they see it. Uh, obviously these aren't standard grips. It's got different grips on there. And when I got it, it came with a nasty gray barrel. If you watch one of my other videos, I did actually do a review on this. Um, and you can see the difference there isn't it's actually got um, a polished barrel in it now I didn't change it I just put it on my lathe and polished it and it actually looks a bit nicer now I think personally anyway um, and you can also see it through the actual ejection port so I think that looks quite cool uh, this is a pretty solid gun actually but it does have a few gremlins it's not 100% reliable so it has this strange habit of sort of hanging up every now and again so you'll fire it it'll cycle the slide will come back everything will work but then nothing happens and then you pull it again and instantly it fires again and it's a bit of an odyssey i'm not looked into what's going on with this it may be the beaver tail i'm not sure i'm not 100 percent sure but it is really frustrating and then just to add insult to injury um the seals have gone on the magazine so i've got to get some new seals uh, the magazines can be quite hard to get hold of and they can be quite expensive as well so it's not a bad gun if you want a 1911 um, then there's certainly worse options out there it's pretty solid it's pretty nice to use uh, it's not as reliable as I'd like but it is workable you can work around the reliability issues and if you look after it it can actually be a pretty good gun um, my reason my seals went in my magazine is because I forgot that I'd left a co2 cartridge in there so I'd made a bit of a mistake. I'd come away from a skirmish. I'd forgotten about the CO2 cartridge and it's just killed the, the actual seals in there. So when you put one in, it will seal, but as soon as you, actually no, it won't seal. So as soon as you put a, cartridge, a CO2 uh, bulb in there, it just fires it straight out the top because the seals have gone in the valve. So I need to spend some time and we'll sort that out. But yeah, need a couple of spare uh, mags as well. But uh, other than that, it's nice, all work, proper working parts. Strip it down. OD. That's the internals, so all pretty normal stuff, nothing too fancy in there. All pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, decent little gun. Does the as business but just remember to take those co2 balls out because you will kill your magazines um, not the greatest quality rubber I, rubber I imagine um, so yeah unfortunate but that's just the way it goes sometimes I need to sort those mags out so next gun up and this is one of my favorites and it's one of my favorites because it is an official six sour product so this is my m17 or p320 I think the civilian version is called um, and this is a really cool gun and it's like hen's teeth. So this is not the Wii version or the AEG as they call it version. And you can tell because it hasn't got the big fat trigger on there and it's also got proper trades on there. And uh, this is a really nice gun. And just to really set it off, I even got 
a spare magazine. Now those really are like hen's teeth. They're so rare, so difficult to get hold of. Uh, so I was really chuffed, but I had to pay 50 pounds for this magazine and get it imported from uh, Hong Kong. So it wasn't as if it was on my doorstep. It did take a while, but it's, it's a really unique gun. I like this a lot. It's one of my favorite guns of all time. It's just so solid. There's no wobbles in it. It's It works. Every time I've pulled this out of the holster, it's worked and it's done exactly what I want. It's such a cool gun and the trigger on it is just insane. The trigger pull, it's nice. There's next to no movement and you get a click and it's just the best feeling trigger on a on a gas gun that I've, uh, I've actually tried. And it's really, really nice gun. It's got all full trades on it. It's got the Sig Sauer logo and the M17. Six hour on the grips. Um, it's got uh, I've knocked it there. It's got uh, full trades over here. Newington NHUS. And it's got a proper serial number here, and we've got nine millimeter by nineteen there. This is a, such a nice gun. Nice to hold. It feels good. I've knocked it a couple of places. Just knocked the paint off the back there. Um, it's a shame, but. You know, I do use them. I like to use them. I don't like the guns just to sit on the shelf. Um, sort of not really a collector as such, but uh, I do like to skirmish with the guns. So there should be some might be some gas in here. Yep, there's some gas in there. Real nice sound to it. Real solid kick, and uh, you get a lot of gas efficiency out of it. I didn't when I first bought it. When I first tried it, it swallowed gas like a crazy thing. But since then, it's bedded in and it works much better now and like i say every time i've i've fired it when i've needed it it's it's worked and it's done what i want it to so really nice internals as well really nice made it's actually made by vfc although it's it's sold by um six hour and you can see really solid internals in here i'm pretty sure it's got a steel hammer as well which is which is a nice touch so probably it's up there as one of my favorites that is so it's definitely up there as one of my favorites um, another little option with it is or option another little unique thing is you can adjust the hop up on the front here uh, there is a special tool for doing it because it is quite tight but works a treat it comes in the box and yeah so that is the six hour and i think just the, for rarity's sake the other magazine should uh, should get a mention as well so this is such a good gun i love it so next on the list is a shotgun and it's actually my only airsoft shotgun because I've got a load of real shotguns I always sort of steered clear of the airsoft ones because they always felt a bit rubbish compared to the real ones but this actually doesn't this actually feels pretty solid and it feels much like a real shotgun feels to hold um, it has that same sort of cold nice solid feel about it no wobbles or anything and it's quite uh, i've actually got a, a semi-auto shotgun and it feels very similar obviously the semi-auto i've got much longer than this it's a 28 inch barrel but it, it has that same feeling about it and that's what i really liked about this now this isn't without its uh foibles it did do something strange one day when it started making funny noises so there should be gas in here actually let's have a look yes there's gas which means it's holding when I first got this, um, I used it in a skirmish. It was good fun, really, really loved it, especially for room clearing, uh, moving through buildings. But then, one day, it started making a funny noise and the gas was escaping out of the rear. So if you imagine, so all of this back here is a gas tank, essentially. So when you take this out, it has um, the gearbox, part of it has like a, a nozzle for better description with O-rings on and they, seal between the the actual gearbox and the gas tank and that o-ring started letting gas out which is a bit frustrating so we had to replace that and then just to back it up i actually put some jb weld on there which is a bit of a bodge job really but it's done the trick because it's absolutely gas tight now um so no no problems there no complaints and it works a treat nice and narrow um actual grip on there it feels good and it's got a nice nice sound to it and a nice puff of gas out the end when you fire it so if you didn't see that <laughs> i love it this thing's so cool and everyone who sees it, it's like oh what's that that's really cool and people who hold it they feel how heavy it is and how, how solid it is and it, it makes quite an impression uh it uses standard uh take and Maru style um cartridges so 30 round cartridges that's why i put in it and fire it on three shot or you can switch it to six shot there's a little switch inside there 
and uh, you can go to town. And also, with it being a, a mo also like a Magpul style mo type stock, you can swap these out and put whatever you want on there um, because it's just a standard M4 style uh, tube. So yeah, it's really nice. There's lots of options to it. I've never really done much with it, but uh, um, there's lots of custom, sort of external customizations you can do to it. It'd be nice to put some a foregrip or something on there, maybe a fancy stock. Uh, I haven't decided really, but uh, I do really love this shotgun. So next one along, and we haven't got a mag in it, simply because they're in my um, plate carrier at the moment. And that's because I use this quite a lot. Now, if you've seen my channel, this hasn't all been plain sailing with this gun. It's done some naughty things and I've got some criticisms of it because, you know, there's some parts of this gun that aren't good enough for standard. But it says a lot about it that I've managed to sort those out and I still use it a lot because it's so good. Um, this is one of my regular use guns. I, do, I use it all the time because with a CO2 cartridge in, it fires straight and it fires far and it is a good gun. It's, it's, re it's very reliable from a fire point of view, maybe not from an operation point of view. So if you see one of my other videos, there's an issue with the slide locking back. Now, not there isn't with this because I've modified it and made sure that it works now. But as a standard gun, it wasn't working as it should. And that's a real shame because it's such a good product otherwise. Uh, I believe that the SPO2 has changed and they've actually addressed a lot of the issues uh, with this this actual slide release catch and apparently it's much better now um, and fair play to ASG for doing that that's that's a good job I just wish they'd make sort of uh, retro fittable parts that you could sort of uh, or at least give you the option to have an upgrade steel slide release that you could really use without failures because it is really disappointing when you have such a good gun and then it fails operationally. So what was happening is the slide wasn't locking back. So you'd fire and fire and fire and then it'd just carry on firing. You go, oh, and there's no BBs coming out. And you'd look and you'd find that this wasn't pushing up far enough. It wasn't locking in place or it had shaved off the aluminium from the inside. Um, now I haven't actually modified this to try and get over that problem. Uh, if we pop this out. Take this out and the problem was that basically in this area this is a bit of an angle it wasn't 90 degrees and it wasn't catching on here properly and what was happening it was taking chunks of aluminium off the top of this actual uh, slide release and you can see this in one of my other videos so what I actually did was I, I shaved a little bit of metal off there to try and bring the angle back because you could see where it was getting worn away and what I did was I coated this in steel um, so it's actually got a solid point to, to lock against now rather than the aluminium and it seems to have worked quite nicely now the gun is reliable it's working well and I've had no failure since but uh, yeah it's a funny thing really it's uh, get this back in place it's a funny thing really um, because other than that it's ultra reliable and it's good in the cold as well so when I'm playing in tunnels or somewhere like that where it's cold you can pull it out and you know it's going to fire every time i've never had any problems with temperature related um misfiring with this it's always fired each and every time even in the freezing cold so you know you've got to say when it works it works so i do love this gun and don't be put off by this it's the later models are better apparently they they've resolved that i would like to get my hands on one of the spo2s to review actually just to uh, do a bit of a comparison and show how those work because i think these definitely have a place one thing i like to do with some of my guns is to actually highlight some of the markings um and i think it works well with this it looks quite nice so yeah nice on asg so next up it's actually upside down so this is a controversial gun um, some people love it some people absolutely despise it and they don't like what it stands for and it is the Novridge SSX 23 mm. some people love them some people hate them I've seen some some people really slate them on the internet and other people say they're good and other people say well they're not as good as a Tokyo Maru they know better than a Tokyo Maru I don't think they were supposed to be better than the Tokyo Maru essentially they're pre-upgraded yes but for the price you know you get what you pay for so, what do we have in the box? Right. Yes, you have to buy the silencer separately. 
get over it. It works, it does the trick. Magazines, yeah, they're okay. They're, one issue with them is they can have misfeeds um, or they feed two BBs at a time. It's not an unknown problem with the SSX. The simple fix is you file two indents into the feed lips and it captures the BB a bit better and it stops double feeding. Mine haven't double fed. Um, I had a little bit of an instance of double feed, but they haven't, since I've done that modification, they haven't double fed, they've been absolutely fine. The gun itself, uh, polymer lower, not a particularly high grade of polymer. It's more of a plastic than a polymer, if I'm honest. Uh, you have a serial number, you have um, and a metal slide on there. And a lot of people say, well, what's the point of having a metal slide on non-blowback? It just feels nice, just gives it a bit of weight. Um, no other reason. You know, other than that, that's it. It does some strange things, but you cannot argue this thing is very quiet and it fires a hell of a long way. And that's what it's for. This is a sniper pistol. You know, this, it's the best sniper pistol in my opinion because it fires a long way, it's quiet. And now I've got the actual silence that comes with the, the Novridge, or the, sorry, that you get for the Novridge is modular. So you can actually take it apart. Now over there, I've got the other part in my, in my um, crate that I take with me to, to games and if I wanted to extend it I can but I quite like this slightly shorter version um, it's really quiet works really well so there's any gas yeah a bit of gas in there so it's really quiet and it does the job and it does fire a long way now it's got an auto bucking in there and it's got a top dead center modification a lot of people criticize Novridge for saying that these are loose compared to the Hadron uh, when it's in the slide, it actually isn't. It's solid, it doesn't move a bit. When you take the slide off, yeah, it wobbles around all over the place compared to the Hadron. But when do you play with the slide off? <laughs> do you play airsoft with no slide on your pistol? Because if you do, you're weird. So, yeah, when it's in there, not a problem at all. It's pretty solid. So, a lot of people wanted to bash this just for the sake of it. And I think you've got to come back to the point and just say, well, what is it? It's a non blowback Mark 23. Tokyo Marui clone with a couple of extras on. Been the slide, uh, the top lead center, and um, the auto book booking and a, a slightly tight ball barrel. That's it, nothing else. Uh, it was 135 pounds, silence was about 40, uh, and the extra mags, I can't actually remember, I think they're between 25, 35 pounds, something like that. Um, it's not, the cheapest gun in the world it's probably not the best value gun in the world but it's probably the best at what it does i haven't bought the, the front light i'm not bothered about the pet unit in the tokyo marie because it's it's fake basically it doesn't do anything um but i've got a rail on there to fit an o light or something if i want and yeah it works well uh, there's no reason to hate it it's not the best gun in the world it's not the worst gun in the world it just does what it does well and that's what it's got to come down, I mean, come down to. In this day and age, somebody could make an amazing sniper pistol, uh, really put some time into it. Somebody like Tokyo Marui could you know, redo the, the Mark 23 maybe, or, or somebody else really go for it. But there's no point, because these work well. They do exactly what you want them to, and they fire a long way. So, no, I, I actually really like this pistol. So everyone who hates it, you know, don't hate it because it's average. Hate it for a reason if you've got to. Um, and if it's rubbish, it's rubbish, and if it's not, it's not. And it's, it's actually no worse than any other Mark 23. It's not a revelation. It's not going to change the world of Mark 23s, but it's not a piece of junk either. You know, give it give it its due. It's perfectly capable. I quite like the, the sights as well. There it is in its case. So, yeah, like I say, it's perfectly good. Uh, I had a guy say to me at one match, he saw me using it, and he said, oh, those things are crap. My Mark 23 will, will do exactly what that does. All right, well, nobody ever said it wouldn't, you know. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't trying to claim this replaced Mark 23 because Mark 23 was a problem. Not at all. It just does exactly the same as a Mark, upgraded Mark 23 or a Mark 23 with a couple of upgrades on it. Um, it's no different. It's a clone. And it, if you buy the STTI version of it and stick some upgrades on that, that'll do exactly the same. And the only thing that's different is the metal slide and the sights. It's literally it. Nothing else. So next up, a fairly recent gun that I've done a review on, and that is my HK45CT. Now this gun, 
was a it was a, it was a bargain really. I, I got it for ninety nine pounds, which is a stupid price for one of these when they're they're reckoning retails about one seventy to one eighty. I think something like that. They're not a cheap gun. But the first time I really paid attention to these, I was watching a channel called Negative Airsoft, and the guy on there had got one of these, and he'd got a uh, Asia version with all the trades on. But I've watched a few of his videos, and he seems, a, you know, he knows what he's talking about. He's a good tech. He seems to do a lot of, he does a lot of work that seems to work out pretty well. And, you know, when you see the builds he does, you, you look at it and think, yeah, that guy knows what he's doing, and. He knows a lot more about gas guns than I do by the looks of it because I'm not so by no means an expert on gas guns. And he was saying that these are gas efficient and reliable. And I thought, you know what, that sounds like a good recipe for me. I love me HK guns. Uh, so I went out and got this. And I love it in tan. Um, the black one looks equally as good to be fair. Um, but I do like a tan gun. So... Here it is, and so far so good. I haven't. I need some spare magazines for it. That's the only thing. I haven't used it much because I've literally only got it. The only thing I don't like about it is the nozzle has a habit of sticking forwards on it. But then when you actually fire, it doesn't seem to happen. So it may just be a, an operational thing when you're using it. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit odd that is. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Probably do with a stiffer spring in reality, just to push it back. But hey ho. Uh, if you, anyone knows of one. Let me know. But otherwise, I actually really like this gun. I think it just feels nice. It feels really high quality. It's a VFC gun. Uh, polymer feels nice. The slide feels solid. You stick the magazine in. Get a good, nice, solid click. And it's a cracking little gun. I haven't got any gas in there. I thought I had. Um, or maybe I have, actually. Let's have a... Oh, yeah, I have, actually. Yeah, I forgot about that. You'd actually got to cock it. So, yeah, good, solid kick on it. Um, really nice I really like this gun you've got the safety on there and you've got a decocker so I got this gun not that long ago it was uh, well it was actually a Christmas present but I, I sourced it um, and uh, yeah really nice little gun okay so last on the list newest edition the MP7 from Tokyo Marie uh, another gun that sort of separates opinion just because it's not full size it's 90 percent size uh, i literally don't give a damn about that it's so so good i don't care i haven't had a chance to use this properly and i'm still waiting for my damn silencer to come uh, i've got a silencer tracer unit coming from angry gun in hong kong uh, i think we're up to three weeks now and it's not arrived in the uk yet but we're still waiting and fingers crossed it'll come soon but this thing i cannot wait to get it into a cqb in the dark because it's so cool i just love the mp7 um we've got some spare mags for it now got this nice little stock not much i can say about this because obviously i reviewed it recently but uh it's, i just think it's really cool it's just a really cool gun and uh, i can't wait to get out and skirmish with it uh it's just yeah feels feels chunky as well feels solid and i reckon the more i use it the more used it looks the more not battered but uh a few bits of marks here and there i think it's just going to look cooler and cooler as time goes on and it's going to be a nice basis for a nice little loadout this is i think uh certainly a sort of a lightweight high speed close quarters uh loadout i think it's going to be really good and from what i've done in the just shooting down the range with it i actually think it's going to be pretty good in woodland as well <laughs> it's got some distance on it for a, a short uh, sort of uh, gas gun it really has got some distance on that hop unit's working well so uh, it could be quite interesting to actually take out into the woods on a, a not too cold day hopefully as long as we don't get any uh, sort of freezing going on any uh, any problems with the gas freezing but uh, with a good rate of fire and a nice warm day I reckon this could be hilarious so uh, I can't wait to use this more and the final um airsoft associated handgun that i have in the collection is this one which is my black and decker hd 992 heat gun or paint stripping gun and i use this for shrinking all of my um all of my heat shrink on the cabling when i'm working on the uh, aegs the electric gun so yeah that's uh, i think it counts because i still use it a lot uh, probably more than some of my uh, airsoft pistols so <laughs> I think it deserves a place in the collection. It's 
reliable, it's hot, and it does the job every time. Well guys, that was my collection of short guns. So submachine guns, shotgun, and pistols. So next up is gonna be my long guns. So we're talking about DMRs, uh, general assault rifles, and sniper rifles. So stay tuned for that. If there's any questions you've got about the guns that you've seen in the video, please give me a shout and uh, I'll try and get the information back to you if there's anything specific you want to know. And stay tuned, keep watching. Remember, if you like the content, like, you know, give us a thumbs up. And uh, remember to subscribe and hit the little notification bell. It all helps the channel and stay tuned. See you again soon.